The purpose of this paper is not to prove that the universe is computable. Rather, I am using the computability principle as a reasonable assumption, attempting to determine if a computable universe would be limited and discover what those limitations may look like from within the universe. The equivalence of serial and parallel processing is an important principle because the validity of the use of serial computers to simulate apparently parallel processes is based on this principle. There have been arguments that parallel processes are different in principle to serial processes. If this were the case, we could only ever perform approximations of parallel processes within a serial simulation. The human brain has been used as an example of a massive parallel process which cannot be simulated by serial computers. In a previous paper I examined the problem of the simulation of parallel processes with serial computers. The result of this work was to determine that a parallel process can be simulated by a serial process, but only if certain conditions are met. I found that by processing elements within a finite discrete space, at random you obtain the same effect as a true parallel process of the same space. A parallel system is where the two events occur at the same time. Not only do they appear to occur at the same time from within the system, but also in the computer's time frame. The serial process can only process one event at a time. A serial process picks points in space and processes them at random. In a serial random process, the two events occur one after the other, but in a random order. Without an intermediate event, there is no way from within the system to determine which event was processed first. In this way, a serial random process is identical to a parallel process from the system's perspective, but not the computer's perspective. What are we doing when we look at a particle? Are we essentially taking a series of measurements of the particle position? In reality, we are using some interaction with the particle to measure where an event occurred. These events occur in such a way that they give the impression of a persistent particle moving through space over time. When we talk of a photon moving from one place to the other, all we really know is that an event at one place increased the probability of an event occurring at another place. The concept of particles and bodies moving in space and time is one that is useful to us in our everyday life, so much so that we really accept this as natural. While it is useful in everyday life to accept the concept of particles, I believe the assumption of the persistence of particles needs an explanation. Why should there be conservation of energy in the time dimension and not in the other three spatial dimensions? State space is a matrix with a finite number of dimensions with each dimension having a finite number of elements, each element able to contain a finite integer value. By applying the computability principle and allowing that a parallel process can be performed by a serial process, we can conclude that our universe can be modelled in a state space. How can we test to see if our universe is indeed consistent with a serial process? Clearly we cannot hope to actually simulate the universe at large, but perhaps we can create a simulation which is vastly more simple while still capturing the vital characteristics of a finite process. Conway's Game of Life is a simple computer simulation. It has a simple two-dimensional finite discrete unbounded space. Each position can contain a living cell, or not, i.e. has a binary value. The game has a simple set of deterministic rules. In many ways it has the same characteristics as our own universe, except much more simple. The initial conditions of the game of life is usually at a random configuration. After the game is set in motion, order quickly takes over. Various complex shapes evolve and eventually settle into a constant or periodic pattern. Most of the patterns remain in one location, however, other patterns, called gliders, move across space. They manage to move because they generate an identical pattern each cycle, but slightly in an offset position. It appears that gliders are analogous to particles and active cells are analogous to events. Gliders are a series of active cells which, while appearing persistent, easily evaporate when they collide with other active cells in space. This analogy does not in itself explain how true persistent particles came into existence, although it provides a clue. A glider in Conway's game of life is essentially a self-replicator. Each generation of a glider creates a copy of itself in the next generation. Similarly, particles in the real universe could be self-replicating event configurations. The similarity between our universe and Conway's life are not perfect, however. 
Gliders in Conway's game of life are only persistent as long as they do not interact. Once they interact, they tend to become unstable. In the real universe, particles do not collapse into nothing when they interact. To believe that the universe is similar to Conway's life, we must assume that the rules are such that it is possible to generate configurations of events in space which are not only able to propagate themselves like gliders, but also able to interact with other self-propagating event configurations without becoming unstable. Particles in this view are simply self-propagating event configurations in some finite discrete space. You can start Conway's life with a space that is filled with random states. Over a short period the cells will become ordered with large areas of empty space and stable patterns of cells that iterate through a series of states. Once the space settles down, we see a move from a space that is massively or disorganized to change into a relatively ordered and static picture. In the first instant of the universe, there may have been a random configuration of space, or perhaps a set of small events in space which created an expansion. The exact parameters of the space is unknown, but it would at least need to represent the known three spatial dimensions in time. Imagine that our universe had a similar beginning. Imagine that our universe started from a random state. Regardless of the initial configuration, the universe quickly orders itself. Event configurations which did not tend to propagate themselves would cease to exist, just like they do in Conway's game of life. This would leave a universe full of propagating event configurations of all types moving in various random directions in space-time. However, due to the density of a self-propagating events, there would have been collisions, collisions that resulted in the instability of the self-propagating events. After a time, the process of natural selection would result in a set of self-propagating particles that were able to develop strategies to deal with collisions. One strategy for avoiding collapse of self-replicating event configurations would not to be interact with other replicating event configurations. An example of the, such a strategy is found in the photon, which does not interact with other photons. There is no true non-interacting particle known today because, logically, they would have no effect in the observable universe. However, it is a partial strategy real particles can use to limit their interactions with other particles. The alternate strategy to non-interaction would be symbiotic interaction. This means that a particle would interact in such a way that it would increase the future probability of generating similar particles. An example is electron-photon interaction. In this interaction, a photon can be absorbed or emitted by an electron. Electrons are self-replicating event configurations that are able to emit or absorb another kind of self-replicating event configuration, the photon. The reason all the common particles are so common is they fit into an ecology of particles. Each type of particle exists because it is stable within the context of other particles it inhabits the universe with. Protons are probably a good example of a third strategy, which is to be very stable despite having many interactions. Protons generally do not decay. While photons are admitted and absorbed all the time, protons appear to be more complex, allowing a wide range of types of interaction. They survive by being resistant to events disrupting their event replication mechanism. When the universe began, self-replicating event configurations would have been moving in all dimensions of space-time. However, natural selection would eventually favour a movement in a single direction in space-time. That dimension would be a privileged in the sense that while movement in other three dimensions may be optional, movement in at least this dimension would be required for particles to work together in an ecology of integrated particles. This is the dimension we call time. We see a similar effect in biology. In biology, an arbitrary decision was made in the evolution to use right-handed sugars rather than left-handed sugars. Both are equally possible to make in the lab, but only one can be digested biologically. Similarly, the temporal dimension is similar to other dimensions, except particles must move through the time dimension in a specific direction. I've always wondered about the contradiction between the idea that something can't come from nothing and the fact that I'm evidently here. The persistence of particles within the universe requires a special explanation about how they came to be. Particles are not part of the natural laws, but rather emerged from the natural evolution of particles that occurred at the very early universe. Perhaps with a different start we would have ended up with a totally different set of particles. It is clear that by taking this approach it is possible for something to come from nothing. The conservation of energy is an emergent property of the universe rather than an immutable law. 
Equally clear is that the early universe would be chaotic, with different early particles fighting to determine which dimension will be the time dimension. It is our good fortune that a set of stable particles formed at all.